Welcome back everyone, we're going through the change list. We've still got some very big changes that we haven't come across yet, which I know are there. But currently we're on Morkvar's strength change from 5 to 6. So he's kind of like old geared, but he comes back faster. So he is going to get wounded and destroyed like outright more often. He is 6 strength initially, so Alzor's Thunder, which I think we'll see a lot more play recently, um, or in the future should I say. Siri's strength changed from 8 to 6. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, she got nerfed, and she did. But I think this is fine. Siri's strength was never really in her strength. It was quite a good card. Card advantage, she was in every deck that had it, I think, unless it was really specific. But 6 strength means she's 12, if you play her correctly, plus the card advantage. And I think 12 is about in line with gold cards. Some can get higher than that, like Madman Lugos, but you have to... You have to work for him. So if you play him wrong, you just get 6 strength, which is pretty crap. And I like the risk reward there, so that's a good change in my opinion. Burner Brand strength changed from 9 to 8, so that's a buff. Burner Brand now only draws 3 cards, and you get to choose one of them instead of 4. So a little bit worse, but, you know, a little less strength for the opponent. So I would say, if I had to say if that's more of a buff or more of a nerf, I would say it's probably a tiniest bit more of a nerf. Than it is a buff because the nine strength you usually didn't care about if you played it correctly. So, um, okay, so she's still a little bit of a nerf there. Skellige discard decks just hurt a little bit more. The young bear now gains plus one strength if first appearing in round two, and two strength if first appearing in round three. So, what this means is the young berserkers, they're the I think they're three strength, and when they're wounded but not destroyed, they'll transform into the young bear at six strength immune to frost. Now, in round one, if they were wounded and transformed into the young bear, they would become a six strength immune to frost. And then they go into the graveyard and they get the Skellige deck ability, so they become eight on the third round. Okay. Whereas it used to be that if you played the young bear or played the young berserker on round three, it would have got the Skellige deck ability. And then when it got pinged and wounded and transformed into the young bear, it would lose it. It would just go back down to a six strength immune to frost. So that was horrible. It meant you had to play the Young Bears in round one, guaranteed. Otherwise, you'd have to, you know, lose out on the Skellige Death ability on them, which was horrible. But now they've just kind of fixed that. So that's a great change. So Elias Strength changed from three to four. So again, Lacerate won't work on him immediately. Manticore Venom, you'll have to use, or maybe Alzor's Thunder. And not to mention, any time I'm mentioning Manticore Venom, there are less cards which can do four wounding than can do three wounding. So you've got the Dwarven, I think, Skirmishes to do three wounding. That's not enough anymore. You'd need the Doll Bluff Arna Archers. Okay. And Wyverns. They're generally the only two things that do four wounding now. So, unless you take some gold cards like Triss or Vernon Roach. But that seems like maybe a bit of a waste. But, yeah. So, there's less cards that can remove things which are four strength. That's why I think Manticore Venom will start to see a lot more play. Or Alzor's Thunder. The Aelian's ability has completely changed. It's changed to add one strength to all elves. Play from the deck when five or more elves are on your side. So this is a card kind of like a foglet. You never want it in your hand. You want to make sure it's in your deck. After five elves are played, it will come out for free and give plus one to all elves. Now, I actually think there's a bit of strategy there for the opponent. Maybe he could reduce how many elves you have on the board to try and stop that from coming out. But um, she is five strength. Okay, silver card. And she will add five strength onto the board. So, she's basically worth 10. It says to all elves, but I think... I don't know if this does all the ones in your hand as well. Because if so, that's, that's pretty hard. You can try and deny her as the opponent, though. I like the idea. It kind of encourages more wounding archetypes, though. To try and help keep that down. But um, it's definitely a decent card. The reason it's changed is because Eastern Grim with the Neophytes has changed a bit as well. So, she doesn't really destroy them anymore. It's not something you want to do, in my opinion. So the griffin can now also move a special card from your opponent's graveyard, not just units. So in the current build, that's actually really good. The griffin's worst matchups are Squirtel and Monsters, because for Squirtel, there's nothing you want to deny them because they have no medics. By actually moving units to your, your side of the board, you're actually reducing the amount of cards you could get access to with the caretaker. So, you know, there's nothing that you actually want to bring over unless they're using something like Roach, or all geared, or something like that, which would be beneficial, because it would come out automatically. That's very unlikely, though. 
So for Square Town in general, it's not that good, the Griffin. Monsters, the same sort of thing. There's nothing that you want to pull over to your side, apart from maybe Foglets, because they come out for free. And by pulling things over to your side, like, say, Eridin, you're actually giving the opponent access to it if they have their own Caretaker. Okay, so Griffins are not that useful in both those matchups. They're a lot more useful in Northern Realms and Skellige, where they've got really high-strength units or medics that you want access to, or deny, at least. So in the current build, we've got cards like Grim for Squirtel. He actually looks in the graveyard for the number of special cards and creates a neophyte for each. Now, if you can deny special cards by, doing, by pulling special cards out, then you're actually reducing his effectiveness, which is really good. And the same thing for the Frightener, which looks into the graveyard for the number of special cards and adds plus three strength for each. Now, that's in the current build. So denying special cards in the current build is pretty good. However, Eason Grimm has changed, so he no longer looks into the graveyard for the amount of special cards, so it's not really that useful against them. You know, Eglaze can look in both graveyards, so it's not really that important for that reason either. So for Squirtel, it doesn't really change anything that I can think of. Whereas Monsters, the Frighten is still the same, but I think they are looking at doing something with him, so we we'll have to see. But for Monsters, Foglets and Special Cards, in case they've got a Frightener, now is a good option. So it's a lot better in this particular patch than the next one, but, you know, I like the option. The option is always good, just in case. So there's a change to Weather, and this is generally around Golden Cards and Promotion. So if a gold unit on a row with Weather is converted to Silver or Bronze, its power is reduced to 1, unless it's immune to that Weather. So this is something which a lot of people fall into when they first encounter the situation where they would demote a gold card that's in weather and expect it to go down to one because it's not actually immune to weather apart from it being gold. But it doesn't, didn't used to do that, but now it does. And I think that's good because that's what everyone expected it to do. You can actually counter some gold cards now, like, um, for example, Zoltan or Yorveth or Triss or Geralt, you know, quite a lot of them. And I think that's just how everyone expects it to, to, to play out, which is really, really good. Now, it is true that we are going to get access to demotion across the board. Everyone's going to have access to this in future patches, not particularly this one, but in the next one with Dimeritium Shackles, for example. So it's not just going to be beneficial for Northern Realms, this particular change. It's going to be beneficial to everyone after a short period of time. And to follow on from that, we've got some golden cards, which have got added immunity now, just so that when they do get demoted, they don't actually go down in strength because it doesn't make sense for them to do so. So Karanthir, who creates a Frost, if he's demoted, he, he's immune to Frost now, so he won't go down. Imlarith as well, he gets played into Frost. It's a very, you know, it, it sounds right. He's, he's Frost immune. Woodland Spirit is immune to Fog, of course. This is a weird one. The Lord of Undvik is now immune to Frost, which is just going to hurt it so much. We saw the change earlier where Harold the Cripple only does three wounding now. But now the Lord of Undvik doesn't even go down in Frost anymore. So he's five strength. One Savage Bear won't be enough along with Harold. Weather and Harold won't be enough. So it's just Lord of Undvik and Hjalmar. Just, it's just so bad now, in my opinion, because they're going to get wrecked by Dimeritium Bomb as well and Dimeritium Shackles, which is something which was new and announced. So Hjalmar's seeing some pretty hefty nerfs. This one, a uh, roundabout nerf with Lord of Undvik's immunity to Frost. The next change is the units with zero strength shouldn't be activated in most situations. So that must have just been some sort of bug. Stammelford Tremors now deals two damage to both sides of the board. So this is going to be something which is not going to be chosen as much by a lot of people. Squirtel might take this quite often with their wounding archetypes. No longer they're going to do this, I don't think. But it is going to open some doors for, like, Skellige, for example. So with Warcry, it's really effective. With Howard the Cripple, it's really effective. So you could wound them while wounding yourself, Howard the Cripple them, and Warcry yourself. So really nice dual synergy there. And CD Projekt Red do want Warcry to not just be only Skellige. So maybe we'll see some big monster decks. What, what I mean by that is monsters with big strength. Use Stammerford Tremors to hurt the opponent hurt themselves and maybe then war cry so hopefully we'll start seeing a bit more um different types of decks with samophores it's not an auto include in a lot of wounding archetypes now hopefully so the hawker healer strength is changed from one to two again this is for savage bear savage bears were too good so this will help them commander's horn is now removed from the game 
No, it's not. <laughs> Commander's Horn now removed from the game after playing. So this is something, it's, it's a new tag, a new category that they've added in, which is called fleeting. Okay. And what this means is when that card's played, it will get banished from the game. It won't go into the graveyard, it'll just get removed from the game. Much like when you consume a card which is in the graveyard, it just gets removed and you can't find it anywhere. So after you play Commander's Horn, it gets removed from the game. It's got the fleeting category. And there's some other cards which have this as well, Decoy, Nature's Gift. Now you can still Nature's Gift Commander's Horn because it was the last special card played, but Nature's Gift is also fleeting. So that will get removed from the game immediately after being played. This is so, like, people like Eglaze can't be reusing Commander's Horns all the time because it's not actually in the graveyard. I think this is because they, they didn't like the massively high strength numbers that people could create. And I like the change. It might be getting a bit complicated with all these categories. There's more to come. But this one is called Fleeting. So CD Projekt Red have said that the categories, things like Fleeting, Permadeath, which we'll go over, uh, Relentless, which, which we'll go over, there is a work in progress, and they'll hopefully clean that up when they start introducing their keyword system. So it is a bit complicated, but fleeting just means that when it's played, it gets removed from the game immediately. So Commander's Horn, I like the change. Hopefully it means that we won't see too much abuse with that particular card. Roach is no longer played from your hand when a gold card is played. I like that change. I think that's pretty good. So it doesn't reduce your card advantage. It's, it's much like the the musters for monsters which is really nice you can actually bait out that you don't have roach so they use their wounding on other stuff and then you do have roach okay so i like that it gives you a chance it gives you a an opportunity to to reshuffle it back into your deck if you have that possibility or put it into the graveyard and just discard it or something so i like that it doesn't get played automatically when a gold card is played however roach is now only played onto the board when a gold card is played on the owner's side of the board. So the opponent no longer has to worry about accidentally bringing Roach out with a gold card. And I actually think that's a bad thing. I know that you couldn't really stop it if you had a gold card, you had to play it. But I do think there was a bit of strategy for the opponent to consider when he had to worry about bringing your Roach onto the board. I mean, I got into a situation where I had Lacerate in a gold card. I chose to Lacerate first in case, you know, something else happened. And then I played the gold card and and Roach came back onto the board even though I just lacerated him where I should have done it the other way around. So I don't know if I like that change. It makes Roach less efficient. He's We've, we've seen a, a change to promotion which we'll get onto as well. Which means he, he is generally overall less efficient. Maybe not taking in as many decks now. Shani's strength increased from 4 to 3. So that's a nerf. I mean she can no longer uh, chain medic either. So... You know, Shani's getting really <laughs> dug into the ground here. I don't think the goldness of a particular card is that useful. It doesn't seem to be. And there's probably one, maybe two good combos with Margarita where Shani really shines. But I, I, I don't think Shani's priority is correct. I think they want Shani to turn something to gold first. Because they, they mentioned that Pavetta, which is the one that does double epidemic. They want her to go to gold and then double epidemic. And that would be great. If she's in here, then Shani changing her strength. There is some synergy with other cards that are really, really effective, like the double epidemic that I could see working really well. So at the minute, I'm not sure I like it, but hopefully Pavetta and just hopefully a change of priority to Shani will just make her better. I think that was intended, but it didn't seem to come through in the current build. Fix some issues with Shani's priority. Yes, this is what I mentioned with Shani a while ago. Shani's strength was reduced. Not that good. She's kind of becoming quite crap, but this gives her excellent use. You can combo this with Pavetta for the double Epidemic now, because Pavetta was four strength. She would generally score uh, Epidemic herself, which was crap. But now you can use Shani and Pavetta, and suddenly you're in business. Nice. Odin's strength changed from five to four. This is bad. He is a very good card because he just keeps going and going and going and going, whereas the Spectral Whale from Blue Boy doesn't. So he is really good in that sense in a long, long round. But he is again killable with Manticore Venom rather than where he didn't used to be. But now he is. So we might see Manticore Venom being played more and more often. Prince Dennis's strength is chained from 7 to 8. So a bit of a, um, a nerf there, but not really that much. So not much to mention there. Priscilla's strength changed from 1 to 2. This is again because of Savage Bear. I think I could put my hand 
hand up for that one, for helping with that one. <laughs> Savage Bears were too good. Reinforced Trebuchet, damage change from 1 to 2. So they now do 2 wounding again. They used to be really good doing 2 wounding, but now then they did 1, but now they do 2 again. However, Reinforced Trebuchet's countdown change from 2 to 3. So instead of every 2 turns, it's every 3 turns, they do 2 wounding. So 3 turns is a bit long, means you might only get maybe 2, 3 ticks in a particular round before they before they disappear again. So we'll have to see how that works. I think people are going to stick it in the decks and see how it works because it could be good. But I think the three three turn timer is a little long. But obviously we know how powerful it was with a two turn timer and two strength wounding. So I think this is the only compromise because they were pretty rubbish uh, in the current build with one strength wounding, two turn timer. So hopefully this will bring them up. Time will tell how good that is. Reinforced Ballista Strength changed from 4 to 6. Reinforced Ballista, I think, is going to be something which is good now. Really good. Anything that is 6 Strength, I consider really nice. 7 Strength is absolutely amazing. 6 Strength is Alzor's Thunder is the only option. So that's why I think Alzor's Thunder will be taken a lot more often. But, yeah, this is the one that does 1 Strength Wounding every time a Gold card appears. So I think they're really pushing the promotion. There's going to be a lot of synergies going on with promotion. And, uh, yeah, 6 Strength is pretty good by itself, you know what I mean? Like, the Griffin is 6 Strength, and it just pulls something from the graveyard. So, um, that's really good. I like that. Trebuchet Strength changed from 3 to 4. So, generally, just a, a, a good improvement there. Gauntero Dim Strength changed from 5 to 6. This won't save it from much, apart from Dolboff Arna Archer. Maybe Vernon Roach. But, um, it means he's worth just a little bit more. That means he's worth... 12 as a silver card, which is good. Decent. Golem strength changed from 5 to 6. This is good because Golems, you know, again, Owls of Thunder, but Golems weren't very good. And hopefully they'll just get pushed up a little bit with a little bit more strength increase. Wild Hunt Warrior strength changed from 4 to 5. And if they kill something with 1 strength, then they go up to 7 now. So, yeah, that's great because don't forget it combos with Nithral that we saw earlier. And just overall good strength. I didn't really like these guys, um, but this might make them just a little bit better. Radovid damage changed from 10 to 8. So a lot of people didn't think Ravid, Ravidid, Ravidid, was going to be very good, but he ended up being really good, like one of the better ones. So I think he definitely just needed a, a reduction. But I think there's a lot of things he can still actually take care of. So, you know, he can still kill Siri. Okay, because she's 6 strength now. He can still kill things like Ermion. He can still kill, you know, quite a lot of things. But he won't be able to kill things like Bork 3 Jackdaws. So, I actually like that. I think Bork 3 Jackdaws is so strong. But I think Northern Mouth should have to deal with him, you know, if he's played against him. I think it's one of the more fun interactions, Bork 3 Jackdaws. So, Radovid's change might not change too much. But there are a couple of things which he can no longer kill. Um, but most of the things that he wants to destroy, he'll still be able to, I think. Ermion strength changed from 7 to 6. He was quite good. Um, so just a little reduction there. The Drake Bondu strength changed from 2 to 4. As well as now he adds plus 1 strength to original strength rather than plus 2 to current strength. So more original strength. I really like that. I mean, really just emphasizes... Diamond and Bond more. It combos well with that. I'd like to see more Drake Bond do because I don't see many people taking him, but I'd, I'd, I think that'd be really nice. If you could play him multiple times, it's like Barclay, and Barclay's really effective, but um, you'd have to save him until, you know, quite a bit later, maybe. Might work in a Queen's Guard deck, but uh, they've got enough stuff to play, I think, so I don't know. There we go. Nithral's strength changed from 7 to 6. We discussed that earlier. He's now weak to Alzor's Thunder, so we'll see that being played quite a bit more, I think. Hawker support strength changed from 2 to 3, more in line with, you know, other things which are 3 strength that buff themselves. Hawker support ability only triggers with loyal special cards amazingly well. That's really, really a massive nerf, which I think is necessary. Hawker support ability now only triggers once from Aromancy. I assume once with Ragnarok as well. Hawker support is now properly affected by weather. Great. Hawk support's got a bit of a nerf, a tiny bit of buff to strength. Not much in the way of survivability there. I mean, Stamil Fords, not many people are going to take that as much anymore. But if you decided to take Stamil Fords with 
Goyotel, I think you'd be not clever, but, you know, he would survive it now. So the Hawker support, you know, it will still get affected by Lacerate. If he takes Damal Force Tremors, which you probably won't now because it hits both sides, it will survive. You know, I mean, it's more in line, but I don't think the strength increase is going to help that much. Not much stuff does two strength wounding. Most things do three. I think some Northern Realm stuff does two, but... So, I don't think its strength increase is going to matter that much. But the, the fact it only triggers on loyal special cards and aeromancy and stuff like that. I wonder if First Light will count as two. Because you play First Light and then you spawn and play by um, Clear Skies. You know, that might be really effective for Hawker supports. But it now gets affected by weather correctly. So, you know, Clear Skies probably won't help much. The Freehead Vanguard strength changed from four to six. That's pretty decent. And the Freehead Brigade, now strength now changed from 7 to 8. These are just the, the plain strength agile units. So they're 8 strength, which is which is great. That means they're a little bit better than the Fiends. Um, but they've got the Elf tag, I believe, but they have no synergy yet. I guess they count as Elves for Alien that we saw earlier, where 5 Elves appeared on the board. She'll come out and buff them all. So that's nice. Clan Demon Pirate Captain strength changed from 1 to 3. That will increase his uh, survivability a lot because he won't be able to die to things like Wild Hunt Warrior. But he still is able to die to uh, Lacerate. But this is very much in line with a lot of other things that buff up like that. Phantom and Pirate Captain buff changed from 3 to 2. So it doesn't go up as much. So a bit of a nerf there. Okay. The War Longship Strength changed from 3 to 5. That's really good. I mean, I've seen them being played quite a lot recently with the discard decks. Now, we've seen the discard decks get a bit of a nerf, but um, War Longship seems like it's going to be hopefully played more and more often now um, because 5 strength is reasonable on its own and it does 2 strength wound over each discarded unit. So it can really be quite good. And here it is, guys. The card that hopefully I helped to nerf somehow. Savage Bear strength change from 5 to 3. So this is now a 3 strength unit, Lacerate is going to decimate it, it's, oh my lord is it going to get removed so easily. Now it's going to be instead of a 5, 6, 7, 7 is the, is the perfect range where it can't be removed by anything, one strength, one particular wounding card, you need at least 2 wounding or some form of epidemic scorch, okay. It's no longer going to get to 7 strength now, now it's 3, 4, 5, generally all the time it's going to be weak to certain wounding so savage bear got a big hit a lot of things are moving up from one strength so it's going to be hard to deny things now so savage bears definitely have a huge nerf to them just all over the place really you know harold the cripple doesn't work as well with savage bears anymore because the amount of wounding he does is not generally enough to kill the things that you want to kill after that one savage bear has pinged it so unfortunately guys I don't know, we might need to make Savage Bear great again. <laughs> oh dear.